G'day guys. I'll put this microphone on if I can. Can do some uh, backyard test. Oh god. Make this thing so difficult. Okay. This is the um, unmodified GP ZZ7000. And uh, what I've done is this, this is in the backyard. This is um, fairly noisy with uh, power lines and so forth around the place. And I've got a little uh, module here, a little wireless module. And what I'll do. I'm just doing some um, side by side evaluation. So you get an idea of the noise level here. I've got these detectors set on sensitivity of one and I've adjusted everything on these detectors to be factory standard and they're in high yield um, mode as well. And I've done uh, everything I can with my bucket of hot rocks and set them all up and save the settings so otherwise i'd be here for quite a while and there's the birds i'll be here for quite a while doing some tests but i've already done a, um, a quick couple of tests but i'll just prove them out now this is complete stock standard unmodified i think i'm probably close enough with the microphone so i've got some simulated gold targets here that is one that's equivalent to four grams, and that one there is a six grammer. So we'll just try the four first on the unmodified standard detector. I've actually done a um, uh, auto tune on these, and this is the best I can get it for where I am. I'll right, get this nice and straight. The noise has actually come up a bit. Where I was getting NM here is non-modified. That's the four. And I was getting it on that bottom line there, if you can see it. And I'm barely getting it now. That's it there. But I did get it before, so we'll, we'll give that, that line in this detector's favour. On the six, six on unmodified detector. I'm now getting the six at the four. I think it's because the noise has come up. It's school holidays and all the TV sets are on. And iPads and computers and everything else. But uh, as another a standard test, I have a 9 volt EverReady battery. So anyone could get one of these and do a test. So gain of, sorry, sensitivity of 1 high yield and I can, hear, I can hear interference coming through there's, there's something causing it so anyway we've got our battery I'm not getting it where I was this is not mod here, second line from the top. I'm getting it down here now. That's very, very far down compared to where it was. 
I actually hope I've got that in the camera view. I was just thinking about that. Um, hang on a second. I'll just check the camera to make sure I've got that in the view. I don't want to be pointing at the ground. And I'll have to lift this up a bit. I can't see, I've got this on high res, so I can't see what I'm doing. No, I haven't got a camera operator. So that might be a bit better if I do that. Okay, you can see the detector there anyway. How about right up there? Okay. That, this is probably a bit better doing this. Okay. This is not interfering with the uh, coil, as you can tell. Nothing. I've got it up here anyway. It's out of the field of the coil, as far as I would say. And I guess I've only got this on a sensitivity of one. So let's try again. It's puttering out there. So I was getting it higher before and I'd say it's a noise issue. We can prove that out. I'll just do a, um, a retune on the noise because I don't want um, some switch mode power supply in some TV to change frequency or drift and then hit the detector and make it not a fair test. So. Okay, and we'll put it on auto. You'll listen to the noise, the noise in the area. Listen to it, it's absolutely hor horrendous. Yeah, lots of harmonics from 50 hertz power lines. Our poor detector's having a hard time here. It really is. But it, let's see if it finds a, um, a suitable channel to operate on. It sounds very digital. Okay. It's probably a little bit quieter, but pretty close to what it was. So... We'll try again. It's a little bit quieter. So I'd say there's a TV around or some electronic equipment that is drifting in frequency, causing havoc. I'm still getting just under the line. I'm not getting to where I was before. Not getting it where I was before. So I'll put that down. I'll just try try the six. Now I'm not even getting the six where I was getting it before as well. So I'll turn this off. I'll let that one turn off. And what I'll do, I'll get the modified detector and put it, oh God, wasps and bees and things. Okay. Okay. That goes with this. Oops. This one that goes with this one. We'll turn him on first. Now we've got a spider crawling up the detector. Unbelievable. Okay, turn this on. Oh, I'll carry it in my hand, otherwise you won't be able to hear it. I've got this one set exactly the same as that one. So hopefully uh, it all comes in. And I'll just give this a retune as well because um, that's why I'm gonna give it a retune. Yeah. 
possible I could push the button. My god. The noise is unbelievable. Oh, hang on a second. That'd be better. I didn't turn the other detector off. Ah, hang on, I've got to do this again. I'll wait for it to finish. We'll see where it ends up anyway. I couldn't work out why it was so noisy. I had the other detector going. Still. Go on, turn off. Now, that would not have noise cancelled properly, so I'm going to redo it because the other detector was on. Okay. My God. Like I say, <laughs> trying to operate detectors with that much power line noise is unbelievable. This is only a relative test anyway. It's nothing high tech. It's just what it is. As it's wet here, I can't go to the test site because if I did, it'd all be mud. So, but this will give you an idea that um, doing the uh, front end actually does work. Nearly there. Find, there we go. Find me somewhere quiet, please. Well, that's better. It's better than what it was. It's not the best. Actually, I... I can tell the audio pitch on this is a bit different. That's probably one setting I did not uh, change. I did all the volumes and uh, thresholds and everything. There's something flying around there. We've got a problem with European wasps. Okay, this is uh, sensitivity of one and uh, it's in high yield and it's basically set up as far as the other one. I think the pitch is different, but didn't think of that one. Okay, four grams simulated. God, it's hard to tell, isn't it, in noise? not making a really fair test because the amount of noise the noise is drifting too so it's this is picking a clear channel but the noise is drifting back onto the channel the detector is settled on which is a real problem see it goes quiet and then it goes loud again so we'll try again if you can hear that I'm picking I'm picking up the little four where the um, other detector, the not modified one, is picking it up with the six. So we have we have an increase of about three quarters of an inch or a couple of, nearly a couple of centimetres or so. Let's try the six. We can hear that noise, it whoop, 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 whoop. I think it's a TV on the, in the room behind me. Now I can hear that through that noise. Now, I had this here, M6. Modified six, and that is not modified six there. So I've got an increase of about two inches. If the noise wasn't there, it would be really good out in the field, but. There is definitely an improvement in depth. Let's try the battery. 
Okay. I wish that noise would disappear. It disappears a bit, and then it's going to come back. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Gee, it's making it so damn hard to hear. I don't know if I can. Let's try again. I can hear it in the noise go like a bit of a, a chirp right in the middle of the wood. Hear that? Uh, uh, uh. Maybe it does with a bigger swing. Well, where I was getting it before, when I didn't have all this noise, the not modified one was there, and the modified one on the nine volt battery was about a centimeter and a half above. I don't expect big differences getting far away from the coil, but close to the coil, I would expect the differences in depth to be, and sensitivity, should I say, to be better. Oh, the noise is disappearing. No, it's back again. No, I can't win. You can hear the chirp anyway. You can hear that. I do really big swings, you can hear the chirp. noise is just too great. I really should not be doing this in suburbia. You can hear the noise. Look, I'll just give it a retune and you'll hear the noise change again. It's um, amazing. So we're on noise channel 144, or should I say channel 44, noise, the noise cancel channel. There we go. Okay. We'll see what happens. I'll just put my hand over that because it's just obnoxious. Here's an idea. Can someone make a cancel coil for one of these detectors? <laughs> oh dear me. You could do it. You could make a quad phase receive the two outers um, diagonally opposed out of phase and you probably get a cancel coil. Anyway, something for someone else to experiment with. Not me. I've got too much on my plate. Oh God, the noise, the noise, oh God. Okay, noise channel 181. What a huge difference. And there, there's a the noise. It's still there. It's just um, power line. And because it was foggy um, earlier today, I would be suspecting that uh, a lot of that noise is um, moisture on the insulators of the power lines. Yeah. It's very, very overcast and it's um, it's not very warm. It's only probably about 10 or 12 degrees Celsius, which whatever that is in Fahrenheit, I can't remember. Long, long time since I used Fahrenheit. I'll turn that off. Very good. Shush. Yeah. So that's the story with um, the modifications on these detectors. Um, I did um, set it up with my uh, tub of hot rocks here. So both detectors got rid of that really easily, no problem. And there goes a car around the corner. So, uh, yeah. So if that gives you some idea, um, 
we had too much noise to believe anything going on here. It was just um, over the top with um, uh, interference. So we probably had a mix of power lines and drifting, um, switching mode power supplies in TV sets and things. Because I've noticed that, uh, damn school holidays, when, when the kids are um, here and on, on the weekend and that, um, yeah, everything gets turned on, of course, and left on. And uh, that's um, the noise we have to put up with uh, local and uh, on the power lines. So, yeah, it's big ass operating detectors in your backyard in, in suburbia, really. That's why um, when I'm inside the house, I always use cancel coils on the uh, other detectors because, or, or cancel mode, should I say, on uh, the GPX and GP detectors. And on the other ones that don't have the dual input, I um, use a cancel coil. But with these um, coils on these, uh, it would have to have someone rework the, the coil design substantially to make it work. But anyway, here, these are the uh, tests and they were within line with what I tested before, even though we had a lot of noise. Um, closer to the coil, uh, it's still you get a decent enough amount of return signal to overcome the noise. Uh, Non-modified standard detector was on the four gram simulated um, special grade of aluminium it is. It uh, is got a decay as close as gold as we can get it, but we can't get it perfect. Was there. Um, the modified four was up here. So that's your difference there. And if you really want to know, I've got a ruler here. I can tell you exactly what it was in um, Imperial and in metric. So 30, 36 millimeters, 3.6 centimeters. And this ruler is metric both sides. So I can't really tell you. It's 20, 25 mil to an inch. So we can, we can say in inches there uh right about isn't it uh there and uh there so you know an in inch and a quarter an inch and a quarter on that uh four gram target um on the six between the modified and unmodified detectors uh, it's 54 millimeters 5.4 centimeters we could say that is two inches difference there I am on the six, aren't I? Yes, that's a six. So these detectors were basically set up exactly the same. And up here, we didn't have much of a gain because it, like I said, it's getting into the fringing fields of the coil and sensitivity of one and all that noise doesn't make much difference. But uh, they're uh, just on to 20 millimeters, two centimeters and about three quarters of an inch. So that's the difference. But the big proof of the pudding is out and about out in the field but what i did yesterday um, with the one i actually upgraded i took that I, ha I went to kfc actually and uh along the way to kfc there's a um area um we call it um oh what's it called oh god it's got a little it's a little area it's, it's near the canadian diggings it's just up the road it's not far away there's no power lines there and I did stop there, and on the sports ground, I drove in, and I turned the detector on, and I just walked out the car, and it was dead quiet. So it proves that noise is a real issue here, and it's not an issue um, when we get a little bit out of suburbia. So that, that was just to prove that the detector is not self-generating noise. I think on my other video, I showed that there was a lot of leakage from part of the switch mode power supply, and I just wanted to make sure that what I did to the detector wasn't coupling into those stray uh, flux lines and inducing um, voltages. But both detectors are just as noisy as each other. And yeah, as I went further afield, it was fine. So hopefully, um, you know, this, um, I'll just grab this uh, camera here. It's been st stuck looking in the one position for so long. Yeah. It's like I've got um, power lines there. They stop right there, but I don't know if actually 
um, you know, it causes more radiation because it's got um, an earth connection going down into the ground. I don't know. And uh, yeah, here's some wattle birds come to say hello. And uh, yeah, we go around here. I mean, you know, I'm just here. There's a road on the other side of that fence. Lots of houses around. And uh, yeah, I know the TV's on in that where that window is there. So I'm not very far away from that. And that generates noise. And there's all the neighbours around. And uh, yeah, I got uh, some single single wire powered distribution there. Well, I shouldn't say single wire. I should say single line, but you know, double conductor. <laughs> And uh, yeah, power lines um, stop at the other end of the property past those trees. But yeah, it's still as noisy as hell. It really is. It's a real problem. So, I multiply these. You can have a look at where I had the settings anyway. This is the modified one. I'll just turn him on. Let it set up how it wants to. You can see all the settings on it anyway, all the important stuff. I won't turn on the receiver, it'll make a lot of noise, and uh, I've had enough of that. But yeah, you can see the sensitivities on one. Um, the noise channel on this one, well, it, jumped, it jumped to 181, it just um, was on 1224 or something or other, and it jumped up. I've got the audio there on 10, both the same, and going to, um, yeah. As you can see, I had it, both detectors sitting in high yield. Um, I even had audio smoothing on. It made no damn difference to that noise level. That um, was just overpowering. So, um, what else we got? Okay, that's um, ground ground type difficult. Not, not that it's difficult. But I, I set the detectors... Uh, Basically, all the important functions exactly the same. You know, threshold level 22. You want to have a look at uh, everything. Pitch was 43. I thought it was a little bit uh, higher on this one. And uh, yeah, volume limit 10. Um, ground smoothing, locate patch. Both of them were set to that, by the way. I didn't find that have any effect on interference levels. Um, ground balance mode auto. Uh, audio smoothing high and I had that on both detectors and yeah, the rest of it's just arbitrary stuff so yeah so that was um, the story with that I don't recommend doing tests in the backyard unless you live out in the middle of the desert somewhere and you don't have mains electricity and you can uh, turn off every bit of noise generating stuff around so yeah that's probably as much as I can say about the GP ZZ can we call it a GP ZZ ZZ there you go we we'll do the do the um, um, UK um, derived language for the Z, and we'll use the American Z in the one word, ZZ, G, G P Z Z. <laughs> oh God, oh dear me, I haven't had enough sleep, have I? Okay, guys, well, that's that. Um, with those detectors, as you can say, I can probably, I'll just, I'm also just do a proof of proof in the pudding of this detector as well. I'll just turn this one on. This was the standard one. And I'll just turn it on so you can see the settings, just just um, make 100% sure. Then I'll get a visual record of it, of uh, um, what I've said, in case I f do a fluff up and say something wrong. But she's all the same. There you go. Let's get down. We we'll have a look. We got our. See so this one here wanted to pick an audio channel of 73. Oh, sorry noise cancel channel of 73 which um yeah it's way far away from the 181 so it just gives you an idea the amount of uh, noise here the sensitivity of this was on one also as you can see and we'll go up there 
gold mode high yield you can probably read that there I won't go into the menu and we'll go across there ground type was difficult same as the other one and volume was 10 same as the other one um, what else we got audio smoothing was high same as the other one um, what else we got ground smoothing locate patch same as the other one um, volume limit was 10 they're both the same threshold pitch was 26 I think this one the other one was a little bit higher than that um, I have to go back and look at the video to make sure or turn the other detector on and look but it doesn't make any difference to the noise anyway it's just going to be a higher pitch noise or a lower pitch noise and uh, the threshold level on this was uh, 30 I think the other one was 30 but uh, probably should have put it a little bit lower but that it I was trying to get rid of the noise it's just um, um, ridiculously loud anyway now I'll, even now I'll we'll just do a um, um, get that back there I'll do a noise channel um, again and we'll just see I bet you it comes up different than 73 it just shows you the, the broad nature of the noise here so just leave it on noise cancel for a minute we'll see where it turns up takes forever doesn't it realistically you can put it into manual and just do it yourself and you bet you find something quicker than what this would this goes through the whole um, spread of spectrum that this can access um, you know keep trying to keep itself stable and that I mean you can't go forever you know you're gonna start getting out of tolerance um, with a lot of the componentry and the way it's set up but there we go it's finished just about come on finish we'll get swooped by a bird then 177 so there you go it's gone right up so that's the noise here it's um, ridiculous so I won't be testing any um, detectors with uh, standard coils that are acting like a mono in the backyard anymore I'm, I'm absolutely going to have to use double D but you know oh dear. you know I think about this stuff and I'm thinking about making making a coil um, an anti-phase coil for this uh, so you can actually use it but my other trick of just draping a conductive um, cloth um, conductive copper cloth around the coil and basically you know shutting it up that way for testing inside the room was that that worked a treat and uh, uh, yeah. anyway that's enough of that um, when it gets a bit warmer like you have a look at the sky it's just overcast here and yeah it, it says it's going to drizzle and rain and so forth which uh, is not good but what we'll do as soon as we get an idea that it's been dry um, hopefully hopefully tomorrow or something I'll get out and go and do these um, tests at the test site you know with no noise we don't want electrical noise like that it uh, really wrecks things and I can't get the sensitivity up um, without making buckets of noise I had the sensitivity um, on factory standard when I went out to um, oh, it's, it's, what do they call that place um, gee, it's something like um, like the specking specking ground or something i can't remember the name of it you know i just go there i know where it is i just don't look at the name of it <laughs> um but yeah it's over near, near, near canadian diggings what they've turned into a um, bmx bicycle track up and down the muller keeps there so it's a, it's a good gold specking area um yeah i just can't think of the name damn it it's uh, if you keep going in a line um towards main road from there the main geelong Ballarat Road, um, you'll run straight up the uh, the hills of the um, gold, where the, the gold come round Sovereign Hill, and uh, along that ridge line there, there's, there's a lot of saddle reefs um, under those hills there, and uh, yeah, the gold has come down. The gold was probably um, headed off by Canadian Creek. It all rolled into that at one stage. And uh, if it did get past that, it would have kept going and uh, ended up down this way. And yeah, I'm just right next to the Eureka diggings, which were some of the richest 
in the world. Some big nuggets come out of Eureka, I tell you that. If you go back into history and have a look, and uh, even the Ballarat East diggings were quite substantial. Well, Canadian, well, Canadian and uh, Eureka and Ballarat East diggings are all in the same area, and they're um, on the other side of uh, Canadian Creek. And the gold, I would say, a lot of the gold here came from Black Hill. Black Hill um, uh, would have uh, tumbled down here, but that would have had to have crossed the Yarrawee Creek. And Yarrawee was absolutely chock as full of gold, and uh, in some areas still is. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, I'll put these back inside, go check the weather maps and see if I can do something about doing some proper testing. You know, oh, it's that ground I was saying, it's called Sparrow Ground. I knew it was something small. Sparrow Ground, it's called. It's a good specking ground for um, tiny gold. Uh, worst comes to worst, and, you know, it's looking woeful. I'll probably just go up there and do my tests. I, I haven't got any um, test site, but I'll, I can do tests here with um, no noise. But uh, I'd rather go to the test site. Anyway, catches, enough waffle.